Did you know that a British reaver once traveled to China where he was crowned the pickle king of Islamistan? You see, in the 1600s, a group of tribes in northern China called the Manchus managed to unite for the first time, calling themselves the Qing Dynasty, and they began a conquest over the rest of China. They were a foreign people who the majority Han Chinese had ruled for centuries, and now they felt it was their turn to rule over China. But as their conquest continued into the 1700s, they began to annex the neighboring lands as well. In the southwest, they conquered the land of Tibet before facing Xinjiang up in the north. There, the land had always been ruled by the Turks and the Mongols, and was now split between the Buddhist Dzungars in the north and the Muslim Uyghurs in the south. In 1680, the Buddhist Dzungars had conquered the Muslim Uyghurs and were now ruling both north and south Xinjiang. And so when the Qing dynasty appeared on their doorstep and war broke out, it was mostly the Buddhist Dzungars who were fighting. Eventually, the Qing dynasty managed to defeat the Buddhist Dzungars, and in 1755, the Qing emperor ordered their genocide. More than half a million Dzungars were killed either through disease or warfare, wiping the population off the face of the earth, leaving northern Xinjiang empty. The Qing dynasty then began repopulating the area with some of the Han Chinese and Hui Muslim peoples. But most of the repopulation came from the Uyghur Muslims who now moved north into the lands of the people that had once occupied them. Xinjiang was now a land inhabited by the Muslim Turkic Uyghurs and ruled by the Manchus who had brought them, Tibet, and the rest of China all under the same empire. Throughout the Qing dynasty, rebellions would rise and fall, each trying to rid itself of the Manchu rulers. The White Lotus Rebellion was started by a secret religious society that wanted to restore Han Chinese rule instead of the Manchus. The Taiping Rebellion was started by a Chinese man who thought he was the brother of Jesus and was trying to establish a heavenly kingdom. The Panthai Rebellion began with the Muslim Hui people of China declaring themselves an independent sultanate. And all of this encouraged the first Dungan Revolt in Xinjiang, which led to the creation of the Islamic State of Qashqaria which was supported by the British and the Ottoman Empire. And by the way, if you want to support the channel and help me pay my editors, you can sign up for my Patreon, link in the YouTube video description or on my TikTok profile. Anyway, you see the Russians were expanding into Central Asia, including Xinjiang, in order to extract the natural resources in these lands and create a buffer zone between themselves and the British Raj in India. And while the Russians would take the side of the Qing dynasty, the British and the Ottoman empires would take the side of the rebels. The British hoped to cut off the Russians and prevent their influence from spreading. The Ottomans, on the other hand, were in support of the Uyghurs as part of their pan-Islamic policy. And while the Qing dynasty managed to defeat Kashgaria in 1877 and retake all of Xinjiang in 1881, new independence movements would arise in the region and the string of rebellions had just begun. By the 1900s, the Qing dynasty had become weak from fighting all the revolts, and in 1911, a series of new uprisings took place, which eventually toppled the government in 1912. Under the newly established Republic of China, warlords began to form cliques and carve out different parts of the Chinese empire for themselves. And this meant that Xinjiang became somewhat independent under the rule of its own clique. Soon, the rival empires were once again vying for influence in the region. And while all this was happening, one man from Britain would soon get involved in the most unusual way. Bertram Sheldrake was born in London, England, and was raised in a Roman Catholic church. But in 1903, at the age of 15, he converted to Islam and changed his name to Khalid. He came from a family of pickle manufacturers and in 1920 founded a newspaper called the Muslim News Journal and began building mosques in London. He became a well-known figure amongst the Muslims in London, but all of a sudden his life would change one day in 1933 when he received a delegation of Uyghurs from Xinjiang in his home. The Uyghurs were in London on a diplomatic mission from the first East Turkestan Republic another Islamic state in Xinjiang which had just recently declared its independence. They suggested that Sheldrick come back to Xinjiang with them, where they would make him their king, hoping that it could convince the UK government to recognize them as a legitimate state. Sheldrick sympathized with their plight and agreed to the plan, so he took off to East Asia, first stopping by the Muslim communities in Philippines, Malaysia, and Singapore, 
and giving lectures on Islam in Thailand, Japan, and China. When he finally arrived in Beijing, another delegation from the first East Turkestan Republic visited him in his hotel room in 1934 and officially crowned him His Majesty King Khalid of Islamistan. From there, he left Beijing by camel train, making his way to the capital city in Qashgar. But as they traveled across the country, the British began writing stories about the pickle king of Islamistan, while the Soviets began publishing articles alleging that if Sheldrake was crowned king of Xinjiang, the British would annex the region. Both the Chinese and Japanese opposed his coronation, and the Afghan Mujahideen who were there volunteering to help the Muslim Republic withdrew their support. Soon war broke out. Chinese warlords backed by the Soviets managed to take Xinjiang back, putting an end to the first East Turkestan Republic. By the time Khalid Sheldrake made it to Xinjiang, the Republic had completely disintegrated and he was forced to flee to British India. For the remainder of his life, he continued to raise money for masjids in Britain and Muslim charities. He traveled across Europe and North Africa and often visited Turkey to buy sour pickles for his family's business. But eventually it would all come to an end, and in 1947, never having seen his kingdom, the pickle king of Islamistan finally passed away. Like and follow for more Muslim facts.